Kia ora koutou katoa. Morena, everybody. A beautiful day to imagine being at the beach. And it's good to think of you out there in your tutor groups, in your colourful beach gear. But we're not quite at the end of term yet. This morning, we find ourselves in an unusual assembly, a virtual assembly. And in my 40 years of education, this is my first. Thanks to the advances of technology, we're able to deliver a sense of community to you. Not the same as being all together in Gym 1, but hopefully a reasonable experience for you all. While there are a number of things that we've had to forego this term, and there certainly have been disappointments for most of you in the cancellation of a number of events, we know that there is much to be grateful for. This morning, we reflect upon a number of very impressive achievements, and we pay tribute to you all for the way that you have coped with this disrupted term. There is still some uncertainty around how next term will play out, but we can hold on to the hope that after a three week break, we will return to less disruption in term four. Our last assembly, cultural assembly, was six weeks ago. And even with a three week lockdown period, there has been time to fit in a number of co-curricular activities. Congratulations to the many sports teams who have played in semi-finals and finals over the last couple of weeks. Teams who won their finals in the top grades of their sports championships were the senior A girls badminton team, the first 11 girls football team, and the 10A netball team. A number of other teams also won their grades. Some finals are still pending. Girls and boys senior A basketball, boys after a thrilling win on Tuesday night, and ice hockey will play finals over the next week. I do want to mention the senior A netball who played the super net final against St Margaret's College on Wednesday. Despite playing an exceptional game and the result being contested right to the last minute, the final score of 32-30 didn't go our way. However, the team showed outstanding commitment, resilience, determination and sportsmanship, despite the disappointment. We all know that failure is part of sport and life. I recall when ex-head boy Luca Vanell spoke at this year's academic assembly, and he spoke courageously about not achieving his goals. His message was that when you know you have given it your all, when you have no regrets, you can be at peace with the result, even if the outcome is not what you wanted. That is an ongoing life lesson for us all. Cultural awards also continue with impressive results from our debaters. Last week, our top teams competed in the Canterbury finals with the senior A team of Oscar Bloom, Thomas Forsey and Thomas Carmel taking out the Canterbury Secondary School's title, winning the final against Burnside by a margin of half a point. In the impromptu competition last weekend, the two-person team of Oscar Bloom and Tom Edwards won over the team of Thomas Forsey and Liam Haxton in a final in a stack on stack final. What a great season for our debaters. Our cultural activities are busy getting ready for end of year performances and the year nine and 10 production rehearsals for curtains are in full swing for showtime during week three of next term. So as we look forward to the next three weeks of term break, we feel grateful for the things we have enjoyed and achieved in recent weeks. Of course, as always, we remember and thank our teachers, staff, coaches and managers who support all these great activities. We do think of our colleagues, friends, fellow students and family in Auckland still doing the mahi in level three lockdown and I hope that they will return to term four to a great end in 2021 along with the rest of us. Best wishes to you all for a wonderful term break. 
Enjoy some time to relax, re-energize for term four, and remember the guidelines to stay safe. The following Fokotoki is especially for our senior students who come back to prelim exams at the start of next term. A tata tapahi, e roa fokatu. Procrastination is the thief of time. Noreira, tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto katoa. I'm now going to invite Jack up for today's reading. The reading today tells of humanity being the object of God's profound love and that we do not have to walk through the journey of life alone. God is like a good shepherd who provides for and cares for their flock at all costs. We are encouraged to take refuge in God's love. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends the reading. I would now like to invite Tathanisa up to give the prayer. Living God, we thank you that whoever we are, wherever we are, whatever we are doing, you are with us through Christ, constantly by our side, traveling with us and looking to lead us forward into new experiences of your love. We have had a difficult term having to deal with uncertainty and disappointment, but we have made it today and now can looking forward to a holiday and time to refresh where we take up opportunities presented to us these holidays to show love, to be generous and kind, and to consider others as we consider ourselves. Protect each of us over the holiday period and renew in us a sense of gratitude for what we have. In the name to Christ, we give you thanks. Amen. Now I invite Thomas Horsey to bring us a brief message. So I woke up this morning and thought about how close this is to all being over. Just finish exams and we're free. One last hurdle and we can go on and enjoy our summer, enjoy the tropical weather. Only problem is it's a pretty big hurdle, especially this year. I can hear Mr. Bevan's words echoing through my head every time I think about exams. Important this, important that, prelims, derived grades, exam snacks, no crunching, fruit bursts. Some days it's hard to keep straight in my head. I don't really think I ever knew how right he was until last year. See, last year was a lot like this year, plagued with interruptions and a fear of lockdown two, electric boogaloo. I'll be honest, I'd gotten a bit complacent. I'd already, I'd already passed the year by the time externals rolled round, so I was fairly laid back about the whole thing. I had an idea in my head that no matter how bad externals were, that I would be fine for my future life, I would be fine for university. Simply, that was the worst idea I've ever had. See, I was taking level three calc, level three calc with two of the papers that I needed to get into first year engineering, integration and differentiation. Not that I knew that at the time. So I did some study, I put my head down and did some actual work. I went through past papers, reread my notes, but in truth, I was struggling in calc a little. So maybe I didn't put in quite so much effort, didn't study quite so hard, didn't push myself. I just barely scraped and achieved on both of those papers. And I didn't realize quite how bad this would be until this year, when I went to review my course selection for going into the first year of engineering at UC. When I saw the course requirements for EMath 118 and Physics 101, when I realized I needed both integration and differentiation, when I thought back to how close I was to having failed those exams. The most menacing thing on that application sheet was the box labeled summer school. If I had failed either of those maths exams, I would have had to have spent my summer studying. 
I was in such a hurry to go and enjoy my summer that I nearly condemned myself to another one of more study. That exam, as it turns out, was so important. Not only did it mean the difference in my future uni prospects, my future job prospects, but arguably my entire chosen path in life. It was then and there in Mr. Webster's office that I swore I would never allow myself to come so close to failing an exam ever again. However tempting, relaxing and going carefree might be these holidays, I need to get my act together and study. I cannot and will not run the risk of failure again. And I know I'm not the only one, right? I know there are people out there who are promising themselves that no matter how bad exams are, they've got this year in the bag. They've already passed. Please don't kid yourselves. Enjoy these holidays, right? Go and have fun with your mates. Do whatever you do best, but remember to leave a little room for study. Because Mr. Bevan was right all along when he said that every bit counts. One more mark might have made the difference between passing and failing. So get these exams over with. See them on their way. Be happy of how much progress you made, how much work you achieved. Get over this last hurdle and go and enjoy your summer. Thank you. Thank you, Chantal, and the J Junior Jazz uh, Orchestra for that outstanding performance. Thank you. 
It is now my privilege to read the achievements of those who receive a colour award today. This is the highest indiv individual award that can be achieved and recognises service and outstanding achievement at under 18 level or higher and role model behaviour for a given sport or activity. We will congratulate each recipient individually. I invite the Rector to present the, the awards. We begin with golf. Maddie May. Maddie receives a colour for being selected in the New Zealand National Junior Training Squad. She was also a member of the Canterbury Women's Team and placed second at the New Zealand Women's Interprovincials. Congratulations, Maddie. Seb May. Seb received a colour for being selected in the Canterbury Golf Development Squad and being a member of the Canterbury Under-19 representative team. Well done, Seb. Ice figure skating, Millard Newbury. Millard receives a colour for being placed second in the ladies under 18 solo freestyle grade at the Canterbury Regional Club Champs this year. She will also represent Canterbury at the Nationals next month. Congratulations, Miller. Music, Este Wilkie. Este has been awarded a colour for being selected in the New Zealand Sport Choir. Congratulations, Este. Technical, Josh Inglis. Josh receives a colour for being the student and judge of crew in the technical team for senior production of Chicago. He was also the co-theatre manager that was responsible for managing all technical requirements and personnel for performances. Congratulations, Josh. Rugby, Isaiah Armstrong Rabula. Isaiah received a colour for being selected into the Hurricanes under 18 squad. Congratulations, Isaiah. Torian Barnes. Torian receives a colour for being selected into the Crusader Knights squad and for also being selected into the New Zealand Secondary Schools rugby team. Congratulations, Torian. Tamati Frost. Tamati receives a colour for being selected in the New Zealand under 18 Māori team and the Canterbury Māori Colts team. Congratulations, Tamati. Will Stoddart. Will receives a colour for being selected into the Crusader Knight squad. Congratulations, Will. Lino Tauti. Lino receives a colour for being selected into the Crusader Knight Squad. Congratulations, Lino. Swimming. The following swimmers have been awarded a colour for making the standard in the elected events and have achieved podium finishes at the National Secondary Schools Championships. Connor Barr. Medicine Bar. Oliver Grace. Callum Lockhart. Isabella McConchie. Bree Middleton. Psycho Terepi Ormsby. I now invite Mr. Morrow up to the lectern to give the benediction. The benediction. Kia tau, kia tako, tatua, teatafai o tau tato, ariki, a ihu karaiti, et aroha o teatua, et te fifingi tahitanga, ke te wairua tapu, ake, ake, ake. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.